S S S S K Vibe Maker. S K Vibe Maker. My interviews are hotter. You know we bring through the best special guests. We are not changing tradition anytime soon. We got an artist from South London who is absolutely blazing up the place. Her name is Crystal. What's going on? What's going on, man? Yes, I'm happy to have you in the building today. I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Of course, man. People are talking about you. I mean, the flow is ferocious. The lyrics are definitely like substantial. How does it feel to be making your mark in this music industry in the last like oh, 12 man. months? It's a blessing from God. That's all I can say it is because that's all it will ever be. Do you get what I'm trying to say? This weren't really on the cards for me like that. Like when I was in school and whatnot, I never said raw you know when people say to you what do you want to be when you grow up i never said rapper or mm -hmm. nothing like that i always said like architect um footballer maybe mm -hmm. do you know what i mean just mm -hmm. things like that but so it's just a blessing so how did you manage to fall into music was you writing lyrics in the background i mean did you just randomly get in the studio one day and it clicked how did it go my uncle me and my uncle wrote my first rap when i was like three Mm -hmm. Do you get it? just because because he was teaching me to do something mm -hmm. and then use them bars throughout primary school and whatnot like rap battles rap battles against the boys and rare, rare and all of them stuff like that and then when i got to secondary school it was poetry mm -hmm. because like we had to do it for english and then it was like raw you're good at this crystal can you do it some more and i'm like okay mm -hmm. i'll do it some more year seven they had a slam poetry competition i won against the whole school and then since then i've been like the poetry kid so then when I stayed on my stayed on at my secondary school for sixth form, it became me mentoring people, me talking at assemblies, me doing competitions, me doing bare different stuff. And then at the end of sixth form, I put it to music. And then since then, yeah, like it was Instagram freestyles in my bedroom for time. That was like 2019. Mm -hmm. From then... Like from when I turned 18 and I was Instagram freestyles and then I remember I done my black box by myself in it like I had no management no nothing I said yeah like let me do a black box like let me see what I want when I done a black box it was alright I feel like if I done it now it would be better but mm -hmm. you get what I'm trying to say and yeah just different stuff from there my dad um took me studio to record my next set Instagram freestyles we done videos for them and then he appointed me to Corey and then the rest is history. Straight up. Yeah. So when you were younger, you were definitely poetic, doing poetry. Yeah. And you were battling on the sly as well. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, that battle MC, battle rap thing is different. Yeah, but I don't, I don't, I don't, you can't mix me with that stuff still. Like, <laughs> I can't, I'm not the type of person, it's too aggressive. Like, you see me, I can be an aggressive person, the music sounds aggressive and all of that stuff there, yeah. But you see when it comes to battle rap, it's basically a cussing match mm -hmm. and I can't do that. If it's a thing where that. it's like raw, everyone bring their best bars and that's why I partake in ciphers because mm -hmm. a cipher is not disrespectful to another person. So you're saying basically that you don't respond well to sense. Somebody gets personal with you, it gets, do you know what it it gets is? angry. I don't know if I will have the faculties to be able to respond how I'm supposed to. <laughs> the like, faculties. Like if someone says, yeah, da 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 S-Y-M, all of that stuff, I'm like... I will have the bars there, be ready, but they won't come out because I'm just so angry. Mm. I can't... Do you know what it is? Words mean so much to me. So when people say sticks and stones can break your bones, but words will never hurt you, it's a lie. Mm. Words hurt the most because it causes like... Like from bullying and stuff like that, it's like emotional scarring and trauma and stuff like that. Because fair enough that I've been in a car crash, yeah? And for... A long period of time, I was scared to get back in the car. Mm -hmm. But now me, I'm even learning to drive. Do you get what I'm trying mm -hmm. to say? But you see certain things that people have said to me, like not growing up, but like being younger, things that people stay, say to me will might hurt me more than actual physical pain because I can heal from that. Mm -hmm. I can see like when I was in year three, I broke my wrist. I can see that my wrist, I can use my wrist now. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I'm trying to say? But in year three... If someone says, oh, look at you, you got you got gap tea, or oh, look at you, you're this, you're that. I will remember that, and I've got a complex. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. words, when people are talking about battle rap, and yeah, like, it's a big cussing match and whatever, not, it's all funny and stuff for people to watch, but it hurts. Do you mm -hmm. get it? Like, not saying, like, I won't do it because I can't take cussing, like, I ain't got thick skin and that, but it's like, it's words are something that I care about, especially with music. Mm -hmm. So it's like, 
using my own superpower against me to become my own kryptonite and I can't mm -hmm. it's just my brain won't process that properly still it's just mm. so talking about the words you seem like you are an artist who is quite conscious with the lyrics that you write down and mm. the lyrics that you put on the track there are some artists that just say anything for mm. the hype for mm. like you know some traction some clout or whatever yeah. you seem like you're very conscious of um, what you write and what you relay is I that a I fair try to be I try to be. I only speak what I know. I don't speak or touch base on things that I don't know about. So, like, even when I talk in road stuff and on the drill beats and stuff, it's it's not stuff that hasn't happened. Mm -hmm. Do you get it? I never say, yeah, like, I've got a thing on me and I'm going to use it and that because I'm not. I would never. Mm -hmm. Do you get it? I'm not that type of person. I, mm -hmm. I can't. Like, same same thing, like, with the words. I can't respond well in a, in a rap battle. I can't physically get up. I don't have the facilities for that. Like, I can't do it. Mm -hmm. So because of that now but because i can't do it doesn't mean i haven't seen it and mm -hmm. i haven't seen my close ones do it and i haven't seen a man transition for a youth that's laughing in maths class to a youth that has to run up and down the street and risk his life every day mm -hmm. do you get what i'm trying to say mm -hmm. and that still causes some type of pain and trauma for me because i've had to see a man completely transform into a completely different person mm -hmm. do you get it mm. out of like it's like a fight or flight situation and your means of fighting is to adapt with the times mm. do you get me so yeah i try to be very careful with the things that i say especially because of my attachment to words mm. do you get me i didn't expect the conversation to start so deep so early but it's all good <laughs> you know what i'm saying so you are very much into facing your fears would you say because you spoke about breaking your wrist and you spoke about the car accident no so no how have you dealt with like Yo, sort of no those? no one can't bring me no foot park because I don't do oh. hats. I'm not really an adrenaline junkie like that. Oi, nah. Mm. I don't mess with them and stuff like that. It's like, it's like, you see me, I can't even, I've heard about the plot for the film Final Destination. <laughs> I can't even watch it because of mm -hmm. the, like, the madness in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, I can't, I can't. See, the thing is, you see like where the rides and that, yeah, I feel like you go one of two ways like you start where you've got all of the guts mm. and then you get older and you're like i don't like this no more mm. or you're fearful at the beginning and then you overcome it i was definitely the first one when i was younger i was all about them rights mm. and then when i got older i was like now nah, i'm not about this anymore maybe i'm so the you opposite might then maybe because like i would be like obviously shout out my boy rails the other day me all of us went to like a bowling party for, for my brethren, Spooks, yeah, mm -hmm. for his birthday. And then obviously my friend Justy drives a Q3, innit? And mm -hmm. it's got a big boy engine. Like when it drives, it goes... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you get me? Growling. Yeah. So obviously I'm with my boy and then the girls are in the other car. I think it was Justy and Leash in the other car, yeah. And then we're driving back now. And then, I don't know, my boy's a adrenaline junkie. So even though he's in his Astra and she's in a Q3, she's still gonna, he's still going to try and race. Racing thing. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time that he sped and I didn't like feel scared mm -hmm. like that. But maybe that's because I trust him in that, in that aspect because I know he knows how to drive. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I'm trying to say? But if I'm in a car with a new person, like, I get mad anxiety. I think, it's, I think it's, um, this is a part of my car sickness as well. See, when I get into cabs, mm -hmm. I'm so funny about the... Like, I feel... Like in the first five minutes, I'm a bit anxious when I first get mm -hmm. into the cab because mm -hmm. I don't know that driver's driving style. I hear you. Do you get what I'm trying to say? This ain't going to be no 25 minute interview. You know that. It's it? fine, man. <laughs> get it off, man. It's all gravy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the the whole, maybe I'm the opposite. Maybe I'll, like when I actually start driving, I'll have more control over certain things. Mm -hmm. I'll be able to face my fears as they say. But, up. but when it comes down to it, no, nah, I'm more of a, I don't know. People come. People think that I'm this like mad, confident person all the time. Mm -hmm. But people will tell you that when they first meet me, until it's like, until we do what I'm there to do. Like when an interview viewer first meets me, yeah, it's like, bro, like she's a bit quiet. Mm -hmm. But then when it's like they start asking me questions now, and I'm really enough, they'll be it like, comes bro, out. Chris, you know when you first got here, I thought mm -hmm. you wasn't gonna give me nothing for this interview. I said, why? Like, <laughs> I'm the type of person not really that. Like, you know, when everyone don't talk and I should. It's You're spoken nah, to. We you. love it. We love the talkativeness, man. Yeah, you know what I'm man. Saying? Yeah. <laughs> so let's talk about Bong Bing. You yeah, and Lali. Let's talk about it. I mean, how did this sort of link up happen, man? I mean, this is UK meets Jamaica, mm. dancehall meets rap. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I don't feel like, even though people could kind of hear 
you got the twang in there, mm. the yard influence, the Jamaican influence. This is more a dancehall track. Yeah. Talk talk to us about this link up. Um. Well, Lali is Corey's cousin. Corey Johnson. Yeah, Corey Johnson. Big up Corey. Um. So when he was coming over, like Corey's that Rod, you want to work with this artist? I said, what artist? He said, Lali. I said, what? I know Lali because mm-hmm. I used to listen to like I've grown up listening to like. Lali, like when when he came out with What's and Sale and that, I was like in sixth form. Mm-hmm. Do you get big me? Song. So big tune. Mm-hmm. So I was like, of course I do. Da, 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 da. Me and Lali got to talking ourselves, and we was patting up a tune over the phone, whatever. Whatever. We actually got into the studio, and the tune that we patterned up is not Bong Bing. Oh straight. Bong Bing came like literally after we finished that tune. We were still in the studio, vibes in the studio got a bit more empty, and it was just kind of like Lali, his brother. Corey, me, I'm a boy Rose. So it was more that type of vibe. It was more empty, and I think the the flow became a bit more natural. Mm-hmm. And then yeah, that was it. Like so, you saying you got a few tracks in the stash? We got we got one more. Mm-hmm. We might have a couple more in the future because he's just he's an amazing artist, man. Mm-hmm. He's so like. He's so good at what he does and he knows what he's doing. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Like he's so, he has fun with his music. And I feel like that's the essence that music is missing right now. Everyone's a bit too serious. Like Mm -hmm. in terms of like, yeah, let me say this so that um, people will pick up on it. And everyone cares too much about TikTok. You see me, yeah. When Bong Bing went off, I praise God and thank God for it because... I was still asking like, yo, how do I use TikTok properly? I don't know how to use it. (laughs) And then it just went off. But people now when they make music, they think about too much. That's all I hear. Like, right, yeah, this is going to go up on TikTok and Mm -hmm. that's going to, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm just like, I don't care about that though. Mm -hmm. Because obviously it's it's the best way to push your music right now. Yeah. But you know, if you put too much energy into it, it won't happen organically. Mm Because if you make something for TikTok, TikTok can tell. Do you get it? Like, Mm -hmm. With Bong Bing, I never made it for TikTok. I made it because of how how it sounded like and how mm-hmm. everything was. So when it came to it and then my boyfriend made up the dance for it and everything was in the gym and we done the dance and rare, rare. That was sick and it was all natural. But you see, when you put too much energy into something, it becomes forced. Mm-hmm. And when it sounds like a song you've made for TikTok, the demographic that you're trying to reach can see right through that. The thing is, though, yeah, like what you're saying, you could become typecast as a TikTok artist exactly. and like that takes away from your credibility. And but at the same time, that. you can make a song for TikTok or it can blow off of TikTok. Yeah. Now flipping what you just said right there, mm. Bong Bing being your song with Lali, mm. biggest numbers you've done so far. Yeah. People are going to recognise you as maybe an artist that's blown up through TikTok. So yeah. how do you feel about that stigma that comes attached with that? It doesn't exist because people like how do i say this people that are like up there up there like celebrities and stuff that recognize me yeah that artists spokespeople influencers that recognize me for me have been knowing what i've been doing Mm -hmm. like they might have seen me pop up on twitter they might have seen me pop up on whatever tiktok whatever Mm -hmm. so when it comes to bong bing now that line of people are saying like raw Chris, it was only a matter of time. Mm-hmm. Do you get Because we've been seeing you for ages. Mm-hmm. And like, I haven't really been, I've never been called a TikTok artist. Mm-hmm. I've been called a drill artist, but very like slightly. Do you get what I mean? Like, people, when people artist. ask me like, what do I want to be called and that? Like, what am I? What do I class myself as? I just say I'm an artist because I, I do loads of different things. I don't just rap on drill. I don't just rap. Mm-hmm. Do you get, I do loads of different stuff. Mm-hmm. Like I just graduated from uni for in my illustration course. Crazy. I grew up playing football. I got scouted for Crystal Palace when I was fourteen. I'm about to be an actress. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Bare stuff. Bare stuff. I mm. hope to be a director and a producer one day. I co-produced my first beat the other day. Do you get what I mean? Like I make the the treatments for all my music videos. Love it. Do you get me? So Very much in control. I try to be. Yeah. So let's let's. Focus on something you just said right there because you don't want to be typecast. I don't feel like a lot of artists want to be typecast. They don't want to be called a TikTok artist. They don't want to be genre specific. A lot of artists Mm. don't want to be genre specific Mm. these days. We could definitely recognise that you are a rapper. Yeah. When you listen to your debut EP, 
people will hear a lot of drill on there. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. That's, that's a drill EP, though. They will call you a drill artist, possibly. Yeah. And then also people will sort of ask you about the arguments of being the champion of drill or the queen of drill. Mm. How do you feel about that? Are you running for that title? Do you no. care about that title, queen of drill? Not at all. Don't even give it to me. I don't want that. Because it comes with a lot of stipulations and it comes with too much passer. And it undermines my fellow females that are running this drill thing and this rap thing. Do you get what I'm trying to say? It's like, I don't want that passer. Because mm. I think that any any of the females that are out there right now, Banks, Steph, T Zandos, Remoney, Shy Cartier, all of them girls, yeah, they jump on drill and they can make a hard drill tune. All of them have made hard tunes. Mm-hmm. So for me to come out and say, I'm the queen of this, not discrediting anyone that's done it, mm-hmm. because that's a part of the brand. Mm-hmm. Do that. But for me to do it, I don't want to take away from anyone else's shine because mm-hmm. I feel like everyone else, like everyone shines in their own unique way mm-hmm. at different points in time mm-hmm. and consistently as well. Mm-hmm. So for me to come out and say, yeah, I'm the queen of this, it's like, I'm the type of person that would say to myself, no, you're not though. Mm-hmm. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Because when T done it, she was the queen. Mm-hmm. And when Ivy D done it, she was the queen. Mm-hmm. And when Banks done it, she was the queen. Mm-hmm. So if you got about 1,100 queens, are you really the queen of it? No. Maybe there's not one queen, but there's queens. All of them so are then, queens. So then focusing on the queens, yeah. maybe not just of UK drill, but the queens of this UK Listen, rap thing. All of are my you feeling much camaraderie? Much like, is there much of a unity? Is there much of a relationship? For me, there is. I feel like I've got an individual relationship with like a couple of the females that mm. are, are out there mm. and they've showed me love. Mm-hmm. Do you get it? So that's why for me to turn around and say, yeah, I'm the queen of this. I just don't, I can't be bothered for that mm-hmm. because it comes with too much passer and the energy around that title is just so like, for me, it's unwanted. It's a bit toxic. It's it's, it's toxic for me, like for me, mm-hmm. not for anyone. If anyone's watching this and you want to label yourself as that, do that. It because can that's, be toxic. That's a, that's a part of you. Mm-hmm. But for me as a person, mm-hmm. I just believe it's, it's not the right energy I'd want to put into the atmosphere. Mm-hmm. Like, like, um, for example, IVD, people call IVD the queen of drill. Mm-hmm. And IVD can call herself the queen of drill. Mm-hmm. Do you get it? For mm-hmm. me to come and say, bro, I'm the queen of drill, no matter how much people think it, that might ruin my relationship with that person. And mm-hmm. people say, like, bro, life isn't about relationships and, like, do what you got to do and da 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 But I just feel like if you live good, your life will be good. Mm-hmm. So I don't even want to poke the bear. Mm. Do you get what I'm trying to say? If only everyone thought like that. You know mm. what I'm saying? A lot of people don't think like that. Mm. Have you experienced... It's not just a, a female artist in a box thing right now, but mm. I just want to talk about this. Have you felt much industry energies or energies at all that have tried to pit you against your fellow female artists? Because a lot of that has um, has happened in the past. I don't let it happen. Mm. I don't really let people like come in the way of my... like. Let's say, for example... Me and people might put me and T Zandos up against each other. Mm-hmm. Do you get me? I think she is completely just out of this world talent. Mm-hmm. Do you get what I'm trying to say? People might put us up, up against each other. So I might want to do a song with her and then the label might be like, nah, because the label's, because people are putting you against each other and da, da, da. they haven't done, by the way. Mm-hmm. But if they was to say that, like industry people was to say that, like, nah, they shouldn't work together, they should keep da, 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 da. I'm not going to listen to that. Mm. Whoever you are, you want to listen to that? Listen to that if some you artists, must. It's, some it's artists, and a journey. lot of artists do fall for it, though. I can't... The only, this, only people I listen to, yeah, within reason, yeah, because nobody's greater than God. I listen to my mum, I listen to my dad, and I listen to Corey when mm-hmm. it comes to music, mm-hmm. yeah? But then, even if you was to ask any of them, and my mum, this gives my mum a headache, gives Corey a headache, gives my dad a headache. Anything they say to me, I question it. Mm-hmm. And it's not because I haven't got respect for them and it's not because I don't believe what they're saying, but my life that I'm living now and the life that you have lived, where you have been in a situation that is similar to me, was still your journey and it was still a completely different situation. How do we know that my situation I'm in is going to turn out exactly how yours did? Mm-hmm. The only entity I can ask is God. Mm-hmm. Do you get me? To reveal that to me. Mm-hmm. So only thing I can do is take advice and ask questions and try to pick it apart and puzzle it myself then go to God with it. Otherwise, it's mm-hmm. just not going to turn out how I need it to go. If I take 
man's word for gospel over God? How am I supposed to walk properly in my life, in my own footsteps? Mm-hmm. My, my path becomes tainted by other people's feet. Mm-hmm. Do you get me? Mm-hmm. And well, how do I know that person didn't step in doo doo? And these men are walking on my path. <laughs> now my feet are gonna stink. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> do you know what I mean? I hear you still. We love the blessed talk though. A lot of blessed talk today. Amen. Would you say that you have a um a close relationship with your creator? Are you quite religious? Yeah, man. I feel like I am. I pray that like, in the morning before I eat. I go to church every Sunday with my mum. We go up to the altar. Do you get what I mean? Like just different things. I try to involve it not in a like obviously i shouldn't say this in it but not in a, a overpowering way mm-hmm. do you get what i'm trying to say just subtly add it in especially when i'm talking about myself but i won't force it upon others because that just it just might not be their time yet to mm-hmm. grow that relationship it might not be their time to even start understanding it because let's say for example yeah someone's going through a hard situation let's say i've got a brethren that's got a baby and she's going through issues with her baby. Her baby might be sick. And da 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 And I tell her, just pray about it, pray about it. Just pray, God's going to help you. And da 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 Even though it's true, mm-hmm. me being overbearing and overpowering right there and then, all she's thinking about is the fact that her child is sick. Mm-hmm. Do you get me? Mm-hmm. So, mm. every now and again. Deeper ones. We've got the debut Someone. project out at the moment. Debut. You can only do your debut once, you know? One time. What it's like to be young. You know what I'm saying? EP. Yeah. I mean, quite a a strong title, an interesting title Yeah. for a debut project. Mm. Break it down, man. All right. Well, first off, I want to touch base on what you said before about it being a fully drill EP, innit? Mm-hmm. Um, the beats are drill, but the content isn't. Do you get me? Because mm-hmm. it's like, I could be talking the same stuff on like a 90s hip hop beat, but like, People need to start understanding that the music isn't just the sounds. Mm-hmm. It's not just the beat. The production. It's not mm-hmm. just the production. Mm-hmm. It's the words. It's the spaces between the words. It's the time where the beat cuts out. Mm-hmm. That space of time where the beat cuts out before the beat drops again. It's mm-hmm. everything. It's not just the instrumental. It's the melodies. It? It's, it's the, the melodies. It's everything. The together, you know what I'm saying? It's what I'm saying. It's the message. So... I wouldn't just... It, fair enough, like, if we're talking, like, in westernised terms, it is a drill EP. Mm-hmm. But to myself, no, nah, I wouldn't say it's, a, it's just a drill EP like that because I'm not just talking grease. I'm not mm-hmm. just talking drill. I'm not a driller. Mm-hmm. Do you get it? I don't do drillings. So I think people just see um, drill music nowadays as what the is tempo. on the production and yeah. the tempo. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? They're not necessarily thinking about drillings and the content like that. Yeah, I hear it. But, yeah, the title, What It's Like To Be Young, the contents of the EP speak about life from for me from like the age of 10 to the age of 20. Mm-hmm. And I say that because none of the music has been made since me being 21. I turned 21 in April and none of that EP music is new. If you go on my Instagram mm-hmm. and check the slide that I first posted announcing the EP, the music's two years old. Mm-hmm. Do you get me? It's I think if anyone listens to it properly, they can hear that you're saying by lockdown and, you know what I'm saying, while you, you were me? studying it's, and it's, stuff. It's two years old. So when it comes down to it, it, it illustrates what it was like for me being young during this period of time. We've gone through so much. We've gone through Brexit. We've gone through COVID-19, lockdown adjacent to COVID-19. I've gone through... um struggling at uni adjacent to lockdown adjacent to COVID-19 George Floyd George Floyd all of that stuff like we had the Black Lives Matter march all of that which I done a freestyle for like trying to balance uni trying to like not allow anxiety to grow because I can't speak to people face to face for a long period of time Mm -hmm. do you get it being vexed because the government's about to start pumping bread out my account to pay back uni. But I done uni in my room. So technically I should just be paying my mum mm-hmm. overhead rent. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you get it? Mm-hmm. Instead. But mm-hmm. it's not like that. So what it's like to be young is, it literally just speaks about what it was like to be young. Cause I don't, cons- people will say like, oh, cause you're 21, you're still young. But for me, the focus point changes now. Like, I have to prepare, like, my whole, not my whole life, but in intervals of your life, 
Like when you're 13, you prepare yourself for being 16 because like your parents might say, oh no, you can't get your nails done now. But for your 16th birthday, you can do it. Mm-hmm. Do you get it? So you, you get yourself up for them for them points in time. Now like when you're 16, no, you can't drive. But when you're 18, you can get your first mm-hmm. car. Mm. So you get yourself up for that. Forward thinking. Next Forward chapters. thinking. Mm-hmm. You can't you can't fly to America and drink shots, drink alcohol yet, and take shots and that. But when you're 21, you can. Mm-hmm. You can go and buy alcohol in America, mm-hmm. and that's the last, that's the last age, that's mm-hmm. the last milestone. Straight so, up. in like the dictionary, if you're going political with it, I'm officially an adult. I'm not a young person anymore. When mm-hmm. I was 20, I could still be considered a young person, but I'm I'm not. Mm-hmm. Do you get it? And I'm a very strategic person. So if you're going to tell me something's black and white, I know that it isn't always. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to things like being serious and how to move correct in life, it's mm-hmm. kind of like 21, you're an adult, that's it. Do you get it? Because mm-hmm. you got to take the bad with the good sometimes. Like I could be here talking to you and you might be like, yeah, you ask me certain questions about my EP and rare rare, and it's all good because I'm a young person. But in the eyes of another interviewer, they could be asking me some real mad stuff, mm-hmm. as what we were saying before. Mm-hmm. And that's because I'm an adult now. We can talk about these things, but <laughs> what do you mean? In the eyes of some people, I'm still a young person. SK Vibe Makeup, my interviews are hotter. We bring through the best special guests. Chris Styles in the building. What's Live going in on? the flesh. What's going on? What's going With on? With the grilling and stuff, like, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Come on. Yeah. Got a head up the gap to eat and everything there. <laughs> Don't be silly. <laughs> no, but when I walk down the street, I won't wear them. But when I'm coming to people are specifically asking to speak to Chris Dow, music Chris Dow about, like, the one that's got, the side of me that's got influence. Mm-hmm. Got the grills in, man. It's the, the artist thing. Do you get me? Listen, man, we all got insecurities and we have to just work with how Liable. we deal with them and get Because through I them. would close it, but then it's like, raw, like, obviously, old Western, what are they called? Old Western folk tales. People with gap teeth, they're born blessed. Do you sure. get me? So if I close it, it's like I'm kind of just rejecting Stopping my blessings blessing. and that. Yeah, like, mm-hmm. the blessings are flowing through my body because of the gap in my teeth. You get it? <laughs> That's funny. You, you, you're kind of making me think about um, a discussion that I've spoken to a lot of artists about over the last couple of years. And it's basically about um, how female artists deal with bad B culture. There are a lot of pressures to sort of sex up their lyrics, be bad Bs, mm. and maybe have body surgery. Mm. Have you felt any of those pressures, maybe just as a female, seeing social media or within this music industry and this showbiz life? I'll be real. Um, not because of like showbiz life or nothing like that. It's just like a long term thing that I've had like from being young. Like just things about my body that like, well, I don't wanna get too big because I'm gonna feel this type of way and whatever not. So I'm grateful that certain things like um positive what's it called? I don't know, positive body culture, or whatever. I don't know if I'm saying it wrong, sorry mm-hmm. if I said it wrong, but like you know that now they have plus size models and things like mm-hmm. that. It's more comforting for things like me because I can, for people like me, because I can like portray the message that I want to portray. Because mm-hmm. if I'm feeling insecure about myself or I want like my legs to be a bit slimmer, or I want to lose a bit of weight, I'm not going to go to the clinic. I'm going to go to the gym. Mm-hmm. And that's because I want my little sister to go to the gym. Mm-hmm. I don't want my little sister going to, to, um, a surgeon. To a surgeon to go and, fix up themselves and cheat themselves because at the end of the day it's like a mindset thing and this is not discrediting anyone that's got surgery i hope you love yourself you love your body because that's what it's all about Mm -hmm. and if it makes you love yourself more then fair enough but for me personally Mm -hmm. i believe in the natural ways of enhancing your body Mm -hmm. like for example um i don't know it's it's all like a, a mindset thing isn't it like because going to the gym and stuff like that, it helps with your, your mental health mm-hmm. as well. Going to a surgeon may only help with your mental health that like a fraction of what it mm-hmm. would actually go into the gym. Mm-hmm. And I'm not talking about after seeing the results and looking in the mirror. I'm talking about actual releases of endorphins. Mm-hmm. Do you get what I'm trying to say? If I said that right. Yeah, yeah. Do you get what I'm trying to Clearing say? Clearing like, the mind, emptying the mind, focusing. All of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Do you get me? So... With that, I just won't allow myself to to do it. 
I try not to allow myself to feel pressure in anything mm-hmm. because I am a firm believer in practice what you preach. Mm-hmm. And there's so many different things that could go wrong with all of these cosmetic surgeries. Hence why I haven't closed my gap. I don't know what could, I don't know what could happen. They, they, and when you talk about the gap, you talk about the gap in, in your my teeth. teeth. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, like I haven't done it because like anything, obviously it's not a fear thing. It's literally just like a precaution thing. Mm-hmm. Anything could go wrong. And I, one day I might not wear the grills and I might just be doing my thing, but I'm wearing them because I know that sometimes when I'm on camera, the camera might catch me in an odd angle and it just looks mad. Like my teeth look mad, like I look like a hillbilly. GK, obviously it's not that deep, but my mum will tell me it's not that deep. It's not, but GK, you got to laugh through the pain. Straight but up. I'm I'm opening up that door. Like I feel like for, for girls out there, because I know there's hundreds of girls out there with gap teeth, hundreds mm. of boys out there with gap teeth. And it's just like, they look in the mirror every day and they compare themselves to people and they think that their teeth's not straight when more time like me, I used to think my teeth's not straight. And mm-hmm. I went to King's College Hospital. I went to a proper like person, like a professional dentist, an orthodontist mm-hmm. in King's College Hospital. Mm-hmm. They said, well, you can't have braces. I said, why can't I have braces? He said, because the alignment of your teeth is perfect. See so if I get braces, my teeth will get wonky. Mm-hmm. So my teeth's actually straight. It's just that they've got gaps in there. So... It's just that whole thing. So if you're out there and you feel like you're going to get up and you're going to go get plastic surgery or whatever, not like I'm not judging. Who am I to judge? Do you get it? Like if that makes you happy, then do that. But make sure that you're doing it for yourself and you're not going to do it to fit in with society or fit in with the trends or fit in with social media. Because in the end, when you look in the mirror, you're not going to look like you no more. You're going to look like somebody else you're mm-hmm. gonna look like a complete stranger and how are you gonna come to t- come to terms with accepting like the insecurities that you are battling with in the first place if you don't even look like the person that was having them in the beginning mm-hmm. do you get what i'm trying to say straight so i don't know but yeah morgan is a song that i like i mean you really got i mean your music's got substance but there's a lot of substance in this morgan track you got a line where you say i need u.s deals but can't take the president you know what I'm saying? Mm. You're talking about record deals and then you're um and then you're going to say that these artists are getting beat out and you're saying that you're keeping it celibate and all that yeah, kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Talk to me about like how you chose the right record label deal and what advice that you have for other artists that are maybe coming after you. Do you know what's mad? At the time, like when the record deal approached me, yeah, it was like it was like the PA of my A and R, Tom. Big mm. up Tom. So that it was, I was completely flabbergasted. I was like, what do you mean? Like people want to sign me? Like you get it? I was in shock. I prayed over the situation, obviously. Mm-hmm. You never know what deal is the right deal. Mm-hmm. That's the one thing I'm going to say to anybody that's watching this. You never know whether it's music, football, whatever. You're never going to know what deal is the right deal. Mm-hmm. This deal stood out amongst the other deals that were approached me because it was that first, this one, and then others kept coming to us as well. And it was like, Black hold on a minute. Yeah, 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 yeah. Under Sony. Black Butter and Forza. It's like a um, subsidiary. Mm-hmm. Do you get me? So there was bare others in conversation with us. At the same time, it's like, it just took one to say that they wanted us. Mm-hmm. And then it was like... The rest came running. The rest pie came pie running. Piping. Yeah. So obviously, it wasn't because they were the first or nothing like that. There was more like, in the beginning talking and negotiating about what we're about to do for my name as an entity and as a brand they care a lot they cared a lot about the lyrics they still Mm -hmm. do care a lot about the lyrics Mm -hmm. and what i mean as like a community builder Mm -hmm. do you get what i'm trying to say as as like a a a seed Mm -hmm. in my community hence why i'm putting out music with substance Mm -hmm. and not nothing else mm-hmm. do you get me because i can talk from both both perspectives like even bong bing bong bing when i say um she just wants to see the long thing sure that's for your fling that's me talking about on the perspective of my bros like you know that film two can play at that game mm-hmm. it's one of them ones same way as a female we can be like yo guys take liberties with us rare rare tear tear all of that stuff i seen it i seen wicked gal out there I seen it Hey, that's it's trending. Woman right here. Wicked girl trending. Mm-hmm. And I seen my, my boys go through some serious situation because girl are wicked. Mm. So 
when I'm turning around saying she just want to see that, like some, I'm not gonna lie, it sounds funny, but what if my brother just want cuddle? Do you get it? Or mm. want someone to cook him dinner and that? No, mm. she don't want that. She wants him for one night and that's it. Straight. Tables have turned. Like mm. in the beginning, it was like, yeah, men are trash. They just want to do this and do that and then frig off after and move away and don't talk to you again. But plot twist. Plot twist. <laughs> like, y'all have a, they've had enough. I stay out of all of it, but they've had enough. Like, hey. girls have had enough. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's what it is. And obviously, I don't believe in tit for tat. I don't believe in fighting fire with fire. Mm-hmm. But it, that's where it is right mm-hmm. now. Do you get it? N- now, it became, it, it went from not knowing which man to trust to man and girl can't even trust each other. So both of them, in a relationship, both people are kind of on edge until somebody messes up. Mm-hmm. Do you get it? Crazy. Serious. Mm, crazy. Mad situation. Focusing on you saying about like, um, you want a US deal, but you um, can't take the president. That's yeah. what you said on Morgan. Yeah. How important is the US market to you? Is that something that you think about a lot? Is that high on the priority list? Conquering America, going over there with your music and stuff? It's not just America, it's the whole world for me. Because I have a message that like, it's not only going to translate well in the UK, it's going to translate well globally. It's not just for the US either, it's for everybody. Mm-hmm. But when I say the president, I don't mean the president. I never meant the president of the record label. You meant the president of the country? Of the United States. Mm-hmm. At the get, time when you was time, writing those bars. It was Trump. Mm-hmm. Do you get me? Obviously, I don't keep up with politics too, too tough like that. And I'm not disrespecting anybody. Not for me, like, and that's not me protecting myself or trying to whatever, but just being black. It's already hard in the UK because mm-hmm. of Brexit. Boris is doing this, Boris is doing that, whatever, whatever. So you got Boris's evil twin in America doing mm-hmm. the same stuff. Like, man's got the red button, the big red button mm-hmm. that can literally obliterate everything on the earth. Mm-hmm. And man's teasing... What was he teasing? Was he teasing North Korea or something like that? Saying, mm. yeah, we're going to push the button. What do you mean you're going to push? You're going to push the button and wipe out everything on the earth. That's what you're going to do. You know what? I don't want to say too much here, but I kind of feel like the button doesn't exist. I just want to say that. I don't know if I'm being naive here. I don't know if it exists. You know, as I was speaking, <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. But then they again... Got, they got to hear you though on the mic. As I was speaking, I was thinking the same thing, but like, I don't even want to say too much like that, mm. in it Because... It's mad, like, no matter how, like, you're thinking, like, you might think, like, yeah, rinse is growing. Do you get it? It might not, you, in your head, it might not be where you want it to be right now, but mm-hmm. you know they're always watching and mm-hmm. they're always listening. Mm-hmm. It could be the maddest person that you, it could all be the Janet or the place, blood. Mm-hmm. Do you get it? So you got to be careful about things that you say and it's not me being a conspiracy theorist. That's just I me talking you. in real life. Like, in general, and that's not me talking about on the grand scheme of things. I'm talking about minute things as well. Your business plans, your who you're laying down with, who you're about to have a ute with, if you got the ute on the way, what you're calling your ute, your new car, where you're about to buy your house, mm-hmm. where you just got your new job, be careful where and when you're saying this to who and what about. You get We're what on the same say? wavelength, man. I'm I'm a I'm a private person, you know. Sometimes people are like, "Why are you so private?" I just feel like people ain't supposed to know all your business. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I feel Private like we team. didn't speak about it earlier on in a conversation, but I want to speak about it right about now because it's something that I feel like I need to address and maybe people don't know the answer to this. But your name's Cristal. I don't know if that's your real name, but there's a, there's a champagne drink yeah. by the same name. Yeah. I mean, do you drink it? Nah, do you know what, yeah? <laughs> I have a bottle. The, the label bought me a bottle of Cristal, my first bottle of Cristal for my birthday, Straight. my 21st birthday. I'm not open it. You see me, yeah? You see Drake said... um. Drinking every night because we drink to my accomplishments or something mm-hmm. like that, yeah? I know what the bar you're talking about. I don't drink to my accomplishments. People always say, like, raw oh, Chris, you just did it. Ain't you going to have a shot? Ain't you going to have a drink? Like, I don't. Because if I drank to my accomplishments, I'd become an alcoholic. You'd <laughs> be drinking all the time. Do you get me? It's <laughs> mad. I can't be doing all of that. And my tolerance will Shit. go high and whatever not. Are you a drinker? Do you drink, though? Sometimes? A little, a little bit. bit. I I'm feel try- like you're a healthy person. I feel like you got good skin. I know you used to play football before. You're quite slim. Thanks. You know what I'm saying? I feel like, I you feel know, like you spoke a lot of bless. Bit of weight. 
Yeah, but do you know it's perspective though? Because your yeah. your your little bit of weight yeah. is probably nothing to a lot of other people. Yeah, it's true. It's true. I try for my twenty first birthday. I writ off myself to get it. Like it was long that day. That we gotta day. let our hair down sometimes, though, innit? Yeah, 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 yeah. But I try. Like it's not alcohol is not nice. It doesn't taste nice. Not a lot of it. Of it is. Still well, tell me an alcohol that actually tastes nice. That, I like, like you could drink it like juice. I like daiquiris. But a strawberry. What? Just strawberry any daiquiri. daiquiri. Strawberry daiquiri. I, 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 I like strawberry I, daiquiris. I feel as like well. there's there's a romance involved. I drank strawberry daiquiris for the first time walking down Las Vegas Strip, and it was baking, and we drank the frozen daiquiris, and it mm. was a ting. Yeah. And that's the drink I like. I like this But what did they What did they make strawberry daiquiris with? What alcohol is it? I don't even know, you know, to be honest. But it's it's a cocktail, isn't it? So let's say, for example, they make strawberry daiquiris with vodka. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you you can't tell me that that's a drink that tastes nice. You no, can't no, tell me that itself. you can't tell me that strawberry daiquiris taste nice because the strawberry tastes nice in of the course. strawberry daiquiri. Of course, because if you took the vodka out of the daiquiri. It would just be a strawberry slush puppy. Of course. But, but if you, know you take the strawberry the slush puppy out of the vodka and just drink the vodka, are you going to drink the vodka? There you go. <laughs> Do you get but what I'm we know, to say? But see the whole conversation about alcohol is, though, let's not get it twisted. A lot of the time, people ain't drinking the alcohol for the taste. No. They're drinking it for the effects. For the vibe. You yeah, know what I'm saying? It's a vibe and this is still. a pandemic that's been going on from probably the beginning of time that people drink to get loose and they've got problems and they've got issues and they just want to escape. Yeah. So that's a whole nother conversation. 100, 100. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it is what it is. What it is. I do try to stay healthy though as much as I can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So talking about the healthy thing, you had a part in your life where you were taking football seriously. Yeah. And you got scouted by a professional team and that. Talk to us about that because you could have been sitting here right now talking about your football career. And that may be going to work. I am Cups gonna sit. I am things. gonna sit here and talk about my football career. I got. I, I was playing from primary school. I got scouted for Crystal Palace at Lam uh, London Youth Games, representing Lambeth and Fulham when I was fourteen years old. And then, like, I was playing for my football team at school and whatever not. And then I started playing for like I was playing for like the under sixteens when I was like fourteen or something like that. And back then, I'm sure they had it broken down year by year. Like it wasn't like a a thing like that until you got to like 18s and 21s but I was playing for them early and then moved up when the rest of my friends joined like from school and that it was lit it was better because I didn't have to go training by myself or nothing like that like mm -hmm. all of my all of my girls were with me as well but then there was like a recurring issue with Carl and girls mm -hmm. and there was a big couple pitch fights like on the pitch and whatever not and then yeah there was like a big fine waiting for me and especially because i was sponsored by the fa and i wasn't paying any of my player fees like they were sponsoring me because i got scouted as a keeper but then i kept moving like growing in my positions do you get what i'm trying to say mm. so by the time i actually ended ended my career after going semi-pro with hazing yet and whatever not I ended my career in striker. So I mm. played every position. Rah. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. And that's how I am in life. Is the passion still there to play football? Yeah. Was it an easy decision to leave behind football and do music? It, that, everyone always thinks that's what I did, you know. Everyone thinks like, bro, I was like, no, I'm not doing football no more. I'm doing music. But it was, no, I'm not doing football right now for like this month. And I'm going to focus on my mock A-level exams. Okay. And then when we went back, because all the girls focused on their exams, the funding at the club just went to the boys because oh. none of the girls were going training. Mm -hmm. And then after that, it was literally nothing. No football was there available. I tried to play with my, um, my cousin Leash. But, like, it just... Football felt different because it went from playing with like-minded people like-minded ages to go into this football team and everyone's married everyone's got kids and everyone's da -da 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 -da. and i know that's what the football scene is like because mm -hmm. you could be like like look at how Saka was playing on the pitch with bury their man do you mm -hmm. get what i'm trying to say and their man got kids mm -hmm. and grown yards, man, grown, 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 grown yeah, man yeah. Mm -hmm. that are old enough to be his dad mm -hmm. do you get me <laughs> so it is like that but mm -hmm. when i say the vibe felt different it's just like it was more of a a hobby mm -hmm. to the people that was on the team mm -hmm. but when i was playing it was like there was potential for something more there mm. do you get me like i could have because it was so 
like helpful for like for my mental health and whatever not like and i say mental health but i've i'm not diagnosed with anything but i say mental health for just like just in a peace basically of course it's something that we need to pay attention to. Yeah. Just because you mention it doesn't mean there's a an issue or an over issue. Yeah, there. yeah. Something we need to stay on top of. Yeah, hundred percent. So yeah, football was good for that. So because it was so helpful, I saw myself like, yeah, like I could do football. Mm-hmm. I could be a footballer. I could do this. I could go to training. I could da 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 da. I could do it. But then, in my head, it was never that because I was so academic, like. Me not going to football got me my A star, A level art. Do you get me? But that's because I put so much time and effort into it. And because I have my, as every, as my team likes to say, I have my hands in so many different pies. Mm-hmm. I had to focus on the one that was going to like, in my head, take me the furthest. Because there was, there was so much uncertainty when it comes to football, mm-hmm. especially as a female. Mm-hmm. It's like one in a million to a certain extent. It's mm-hmm. one in a million when you're a boy as well, mm-hmm. but it's one in a million when you're a female. Mm-hmm. So in my head, I said to myself, if I just get my grades in sixth form, in my A-levels, then I can just go to uni and study illustration, which I did, graduate, and then work off of getting my graduate job. But along that time... I got a record deal. Do you get it? Like, mm-hmm. the life plan was not... Mm-hmm. Do you get... Look at how, like... Obviously, you'd say that it was on the cards because I was rapping from three years old and I'd done poetry and did it. But for my intentions for myself, it was never that. Mm-hmm. Do you get me? Music, I never saw myself as like, yeah, I'm going to be a, mm-hmm. a rapper, a big famous rapper when I'm older. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying I'm a big famous rapper, but I got my first couple million streams. Blessings. Within my first proper, proper year of it. Mm-hmm. Do you get me? Crazy. So, that's I don't the story. know, man. Yeah, that's the story of, mm-hmm. of football and whatnot. But I, I do love football. And I know they say those who can't do teach, but I'd be a football coach. Mm-hmm. Why not? That'd be sick. Like, imagine like coming, imagine it's a point in time where I'm actually becoming kids' favourite rapper and you can go to your favourite rapper's football coaching session. Hey, I mean, you're saying a lot right there, man. Get me. Let's talk about 13 going on 30. Mm. There's a line on the song where you say, I was young when I learned that I could... This is a complex line here, man. I'm yeah. not a rapper still, but I think, you know, it? yeah, you know the line it? I'm talking about. I was young when I learned you could cop pills and shot to people that really want pop pills. Damn. Damn, man. Yeah. I mean, that's a lot you said right there. Yeah. That, as I said, what I said about the EP is from, like, the ages of 10 upwards. Do you get me? Like, I have key stages in my life where I remember my consciousness being raised. Like, it was like a rude awakening. Like, raw. Is this what people are on? Mm-hmm. Do you get me? One of them was 13, hence why it's called 13 going on 30. And I, I key stage around the age 10. Like, that's that's why I keep mentioning 10 because that's the point in time in primary school where I remember finding out, like, just different things. And obviously, games like, for example... Mum never used to let me play them, but I know my brothers used to play Grand Theft Auto. Mm-hmm. And on Grand Theft Auto, what do you do? You mm-hmm. cop pills and shot to people that really want pop pills. Mm-hmm. Do you get me? Like, just different things. Like, and when you're doing, like, um, sex education class in primary school and they talk to you about drugs and stuff like that. Did you ever indulge? In? In, like, narcotics or anything like no? that? No. I mean, i got to ask the question. Uh-uh. So. I've never been a shotter. Uh-uh. <laughs> Not no, even no. shot in, though. Like... There is, again, we've spoken about pandemics. Like, we know the COVID pandemic. There's pandemics, loads of pandemics. There's pandemics that people bleaching their skin. There's pandemics of people taking yeah, 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 actual yeah. Um, recreational drugs. Yeah, no, and no, it's no. like a thing that people don't think is happening, but it's happening Mm-mm. amongst young people as well. Like I mean, the young... Do you know what? I'm going to be honest. Can I speak on this? Yeah? yeah, speak on it. I'm saying this for any kids watching, yeah? Don't partake in anything. Just don't do anything. Yeah, don't do nothing. Don't do no type of drugs. Don't do no say no to drugs. And I'm gonna tell you a story about a time when I had edibles for the first time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was at my friend's 18th birthday party. Mm. I weren't even 18 yet. Mm-hmm. When I went home to my mom, she was scared, like scared. I've told about. I've heard, I've heard about these mad experiences. That's the maddest thing. Yeah, what my ones? No, like with the edibles it, as well. I don't know what I thought it weren't gonna hit. I thought it weren't hitting whatever. So we was just all eating out the brownie pan. Mm-hmm. Do you get it? And I don't know what type of weed it was like. This is why I'm so on and I don't trust what anyone says. Not saying I got spiked or nothing like that, but I overly ask questions about things now. Mm-hmm. Because if someone's trying to give me a drink 
What drink is it? Tropical juice. You know, has it got, has it got pineapple let, in don't it? Don't let no one pour my liquor. Do you get me? <laughs> it's tropical juice. Like, literally from Tesco. Mm-hmm. Bro, what type of tropical juice? I don't know. So, if you don't know, why mm. are you giving it to me? Straight up. Do you get me? Especially because I've got, like, allergies and things like that. It's got pineapple in it. Sorry, bro. I can't have it. Mm. I appreciate the gesture, though. Mm-hmm. Do you get me? Mm. So, when, like, back then, I didn't even ask what type of weed is it in there or mm-hmm. nothing like that. We just trying to have fun trying to be kids and then i had a bit of liquor light liquor and dark liquor mm-hmm. so i mixed Mix my drinks it, yeah. and i had the yo i swear there was a point in time where it all kicked in at the same time the room went dark all i could see was silhouettes and it was like a space jam thing where you know when the <sighs> monsters went big mm. so it was just me by myself like i could hear the music and I could see shadows and it was like the, everyone just went tall and it was just me there like this. Mm. Do you get it? And I can't see their faces. I can just see their shadows. So it's it's like, I don't know. It was like a proper psychedelic experience that I didn't like. That's what I'm saying. Listen, to any Pitney them watching, if you don't feel like you can handle anything like that, I don't like horror films. I lived in a horror film that day. <laughs> And that was like more of a spiritual thing because I believe that psychedelic drugs and things like that open you up into that into that spectrum of life, mm. into that realm of living. Mm. Yeah, so if you can't handle things like that, even if you think you can, I'm telling you, you can't. You can't handle stuff like that. It's like a... I will never take drugs again, mm. any type of drug. And that was just like... People think edibles are harmless. And even my brethren are like, having edibles and things like that. They're like, no, nah, Chris, it just mongs you out. No, I had my first experience and Mm -hmm. I don't want it to... I still say to this day, like, I don't know. Once you have your first taste of, like, a drug or alcohol or anything, you don't actually know if you're the same version of yourself that you was before you had that. Mm -hmm. And that's what scares me the most. Mm. Because if I was to have, like, a drug or that even alcohol sometimes, when I ripped off myself on my 21st birthday, one of the main things I was scared about is that I would never be able to make music the same again. Mm. Because I don't know if I'm going to, if my brain's going to work the same, mm-hmm. if I'm going to be the same version of myself that was attached to the world, like how I am. Do you get me? So if you want to function properly, don't partake in anything that you shouldn't be doing. Like I've never sh- shot drugs or anything like that. When I was in school, I had a little tuck shop in my night duffel bag and I went to school and bought the six pack of of jammings for one pound, put them in my freezer and sold them for one pound each. That's the type of shopping I was doing, mm. but nothing else. Tuck shop hustle. Tuck shop hustle. That's mm. it. That's all you should be dealing with. I got Now I'm hearing kids are selling vape at school mm-hmm. because they look old enough. So when they go into the shop, they can buy them in bulk and then sell them to the kids that look young. Like, allow it. That's not like do you get me. Obviously, I know everyone's got a hustle and rare, 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 but like I don't. No, nah, it's it's not me. Still, I've never been that type of person. Still, and one time I've done balloons too. Oh, straight. Yeah, the don't craziest. do those. Obviously, there's been loads of horror stories since. Mm-hmm. Don't do balloons. It's it lets like some type of nitrate, like gas, into your brain and messes up your your whole like. As I said, you don't know if you're going to be the same version of yourself again. Mm. It could be like, it's cold. Remember, it's cold what they put into the balloon, you know. So you don't know if that's going to go and affect the circulation of the oxygen in your brain and that. A lot of real stuff spoken then and a lot of real stuff spoken today. Mm. What are the long-term ambitions for Crystal? Boy, I always say this. I don't know. Like, I just want to make some type of positive change, like, globally. In my community is where I'm going to start first, like, just in terms of like maybe even the way the kids look at themselves mm-hmm. and that there's there's nowhere better for them than ends mm-hmm. do you get what i'm trying to say but then eventually it's like i want to portray that message into people everywhere your circumstances do not define you mm-hmm. your plan for yourself might not even be the set plan that that, that that not be that might not be the way your life is gonna get executed do you get what I'm trying to say? That might not be the sequence that you're going to live by. Mm-hmm. Do you get me? And you you got to be okay with it. Because I turned around and said to myself one day, I'm going to be a professional artist. But I just didn't tell myself the correct type of artist. Do you get what I'm trying to say? And I'm okay with that. I'm comfortable with it because it's a blessing. I'm able to to earn 
so many different things and it's not just finances it's respect it's respect for myself is just bare different stuff so yeah man just that's that's my plan to make a to make a change to mm-hmm. be influencing in a positive light Listen, it's been a great conversation today. Myself, SK Vibe Maker and Crystal. They say my interviews are hotter. Blazing. Jeez. SK Vibe Maker.